Did you know that it's possible to disagree without being disagreeable? It is. I'm Nicolene Peck and I teach parenting and good communication and how to build strong family bonds all over the world through the lens of the principle self-government, which is a key to the answer to this question today. And in this video, we're going to be talking about disagreeing without being disagreeable. In this video, we're going to be talking about discussion, discourse, what makes good disagreeing, if it's healthy or not, and how to disagree with people in appropriate ways. I'd like to start out with a little bit of an insight about me. So my dad was a debate coach and a communications professor. To say that communication in our home was important would actually be kind of an understatement. Dad always wanted us to communicate exactly and effectively. In fact, he would expose fallacies and all kinds of things in our arguments if they were not done well. So we did learn that communication was important. We also learned as a family that it was okay to disagree. In fact, Dad had no problem sparring and disagreeing with us, but he did want it to stay at a certain level, the level of good civil discourse. Thank you, Dad, for that. That's all I'm going to say. So I don't only do this, but I head an international organization for women dedicated to protecting children and protecting women, and I consult at the United Nations. I also am working all the time on bills at a legislative level where I'm trying to help protect children and families. It's like my whole life that I've given and it's all service work that I do because I care so much about the state of families in the world today and I know that what happens in the family is what happens in the rest of the world and so I'm trying to help as much as I can. But I'll tell you what, I have to have some uncomfortable conversations with people. I get attacked sometimes. There was a time on a Senate floor that a senator who was mad at me and didn't like a bill that I was suggesting to come forward actually said, Nicolene Peck is a liar on the Senate floor. Now, I wasn't one of the senators, so I couldn't, you know, defend myself on the Senate floor. But I thought to myself, wow, I'm so glad I know how to take an attack like this. And I'm so glad that I know how to talk to all the people afterward who are going to come to me and say, whoa, she is saying you are lying. What is that about? And so then I could talk to them about it. Um, she was, you know, obviously telling a falsehood. It wasn't true. Um, because that's one of those ways that people try to win a debate sometimes is just by saying something that's not true. And so that's what she did. Whether she believed she was saying the truth or not, I don't know. But in the end, um, it was disproved and I could do it very easily by just having good civil discourse. So knowing what civil discourse is, is important. Let's talk about that. And then I want to share with you a skill for disagreeing that will change your life and the life of your family too. What is civil discourse? The US Supreme Court defined civil discourse as robust, honest, frank, and constructive dialogue and deliberation that seeks to advance the public interest. Civil discourse neither diminishes the other's moral worth nor question their good judgment. It avoids hostility, direct antagonism, or excessive persuasion. It requires modesty and an appreciation for the other participant's experience. That is what civil discourse means. That means that every single person has value. You recognize their value as you discuss with them. Is this a mature skill? Oh yes, but can children learn it? Yes. Even my two-year-old granddaughter knows how to disagree with her parents in a calm way that honors them but still explains her point of view. She can do baby version of civil discourse. We are seeing the death of civil discourse in our nations and in our countries. If you don't have good civil discourse, that leads to a war of words or sometimes even physical wars, world wars. 
if people do not discuss things property, properly and value each other's experiences and where they're coming from. This is the seed of war. It can happen in your homes, your offices, or your nations. To be very clear, rioting, burning things, violence, is not good civil discourse, even though protesting can be good civil discourse. The tone of the civil discourse matters. So how you feel when you're communicating about the other person makes a big difference in if that discourse is seen as civil or not. Think about it. This is simply the exercise of patience, integrity, humility, and mutual respect in civil conversation, even or especially with those with whom we disagree. When we can have conversations with people that we disagree with, and we can do it with humility, respect, and integrity, we are going to find solutions ultimately. The legislative process is a messy process. I was just talking to my husband about this the other day. He and I and some legislator friends of mine were discussing, and he's like, I could never do it because it just takes so long, and can't everybody see the truth and just get stuff taken care of faster? And we all smiled and said, but that's not how the process is supposed to work. Everyone is supposed to be heard, which means it has to be a messy process. It has to be a long process where people talk and talk and listen and listen. And they may not agree with everyone all the time, but they must talk and listen. And he said, well, I just couldn't do it. Civil discourse is hard and it's something that a person has to practice. I know that I've definitely had to practice it and if it weren't for raising foster children and raising my children in the way that I did, I don't know if I would be able to do all of the disagreeing that I do on a legislative and global government level that I do. So let's talk about one key skill that I keep in mind so that I can have good civil discourse. So I teach children four basic skills of self-government. Each of those four basic skills has a children's book that teaches them. One of those four basic skills is disagreeing appropriately, and that is taught in this book right here, Page Takes the Stage. Disagreeing appropriately is the gateway skill to self-government. This is the skill that helps the child learn how to be understood but not ruin the roles or the relationships and not get emotionally manipulative at the same time. And adults need this skill too. Everyone needs it. So what are the steps to disagreeing appropriately? You look at the person or the situation. You keep a calm face, voice, and body. You say that you understand the other person's point of view. That requires listening to the other person and caring about the other person if you're really gonna do it right. Then you share your point of view. Then you listen to what the other person has to say, and then you say okay and drop the subject. Whether they agree with you or whether they don't agree with you, you cannot control. So whatever they say, you say okay, that's what they think. And then you drop the subject. That's it. You move on. Now in a legislative capacity, am I going to let one person's no answer stop me from pursuing a piece of legislation? No, I'm just going to carry on. But when it comes to, you know, in my family, if somebody says, you know, no, you, you can't do that or I don't want you to do that. Am I going to listen and say, okay, and just drop the subject? Yeah, of course I am. It's one little issue. It's a family. The relationship is so much more important. Being able to disagree appropriately with someone, to listen to what they have to say, to share what you think with them, this is good civil discourse. Now, it hinges on the idea of calmness. You'll remember that at the very beginning of this skill, it says you look at the person and then you keep a calm face, voice, and body. The calm face voice and body makes or breaks the civil discourse. And that is probably the hardest part of self-government to learn is actually calmness. But I'd like to help you get a jump start on that. So I have a calm parenting toolkit that right now I am giving to everyone for free. So if you go to the description below this video, there is a link to the Calm Parenting Toolkit, it says teachselfgov.com slash toolkit. And if you click on that, then you can get the Calm Parenting Toolkit right now for free. 
This will start you on your road to calmness, which will help with disagreeing appropriately, with accepting no answers, following instructions, accepting consequences, correcting other people, correcting yourselves. It's not going to teach all of those skills. Those skills are taught in my TSG parenting course, as well as other things, but it will help you with the calmness skill, which is a great first step. So click on the link to that Calm Parenting Toolkit today. I'll see you there.